Hello, this is Hot Indonesia, where you get three for the price of one. I'm Dalton Tanaraka in Jakarta. Here is this week's HI Hot List. Bad signal. Why the country's national TV broadcaster needs more fine-tuning. Lawmaker Tantu Yahya has a plan. Breaking bread. Why the bakery business is rising high and making Lal da Silva happy. And royal treatment. From London to Jogja, young ladies are in the spotlight. Business exec Handi Kurniawan is a fan. Here beside me when she's not planning the country's future is Yeni Wahid, director of the Wahid Institute, president or daughter of the fourth president of Indonesia, not yet president, and color coordinator, which she is very well. Oh. Hot topic number one, bad signal. It has 7,000 employees with an annual budget of more than $60 million. But Televisi Republic Indonesia, TVRI, is not known for its quality. In fact, ratings are low, single digits, and corruption is a factor in the production of programs. So, Parliament is working on fixing the problem with a merger of TVRI and Radio Republic Indonesia. The goal, says one lawmaker, is to be as good someday as the BBC or Japan's NHK. Now, that lawmaker is sitting in the studio, Tantui. Um, there are two issues here. One, of course, is the huge bureaucracy of both, which would be cut down by a merger, and that would be a help. But the second more important factor is better content. So two different issues, two different very important issues here. Yeah, our public broadcasters, TVRI and RRI, have been experiencing uh, the same problems from time to time. There are three big major issues that have to be uh, uh, solved in a very short future. The first is the uh, the funding support, which comes from ma majorly from the state budget, from APBN. Taxpayers, us, us. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. The second is the weak or unskilled uh, manpower, which cannot be fired because of their status. And the third is the uh, weak and outdated uh, technology. So these three main issues can only be uh, solved if uh, there is a political support uh, from the parliament. Because we understand uh, the government, in this case, uh, Ministry of Communication and Information, has been doing a lot. But then they are limited by uh, political issues behind that. So uh, from the last terms, uh, my last terms in the parliament, we have been uh, coming up with an idea of strengthening the positions of our public broadcasters first by making the umbrella, the law, to cover the operations. So that is the reasons why uh, the arrangements of the public broadcast in Indonesia is no longer under uh, broadcast law, which is now being amended. But we take it out and put it into uh, a special law, which we call the public broadcast law, or RTRI, which stands for Radio Televisi Republik Indonesia. So by having this, we can then move forward by uh, giving uh, more uh, budget as requested to broadcast, uh, to, to, to run a public broadcast. They need more budget? They seem to have a big, pretty big budget right no, now. No, we, not... need, we need more budget to cover Holy 250 God. million people right now. Okay. Okay, second, and then uh, by having this law, then the government and, and the DDPR would have accessibility to uh, uh, what do you call it to uh, arrange or? to rearrange to rearrange the staffing, the manpower. So you want to have more direct control. That's of what course. that's what this law would of give. Of course. So in a very short future, because the law should be passed this year, so two or three years uh, at the latest uh, from now, uh, we can see already uh, the word caliber, the world standard so. uh, public broadcast like NHK, like uh, uh, BBC. Yeah, I hope so. Earlier. I hope it's sooner than that. And I have a suggestion for you later on. But uh, Yeni, you know, you grew up when TVRI had the monopoly, mm -hmm. right? And they were the only game in town before private television was allowed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told programming was better back then. I mean, is, is that true or, or well, seems so? Well, because there were no competitions, of course. They, you know, they're the only one who provides this uh, this service. You know, television. But you can tell bad or good, even if they're the only one, and maybe because the equipment was new then. You know, to be fair, Dalton, I don't, I hardly watch a TVRI nowadays, so you know, I don't really, I cannot compare. Okay, you know, I don't blame her for that. <laughs> well, but, not many people are. You know, two percent at uh, rating share, basically. You know. Well, two percent rating share is not that bad. I that's, mean, that's if you for a uh, national broadcaster in every province, that's and, and terrible. And I'm quite surprised about the issue of budgeting because uh, you know, this is from what I heard is that uh, you can actually hire a, a time slot uh, at TVRI to 
run your program. You know, if you have any programs whatsoever, if you want to create a program there, then it's available for public or for certain. I well, you can propose a program like uh, any, anyone. No, right? the budget that has been placed for them right now is not sufficient. It's far from being sufficient to support what they need. For instance, there are over 356 uh, relay towers all over Indonesia. And probably you get surprised when I say only 25% of those are working. 25%. <laughs> so you can never expect to receive the signals uh, even in the outskirts of Jakarta. Wow. I just came back from, uh, from Aceh two weeks ago. You know what happened? They have, uh, in Aceh, there are 11 uh, uh, car tiers, kabupaten. And uh, there are right now 11, 11 relay stations. Only two of them are working. So you're talking so about the, the, the hardware, the technology. Of course, the technology. Not so much, not even First is outdated, yeah. outdated, and second, it's no longer enough. I mean, I mean, I mean, to to yeah. cover the big area of Indonesia from Sabang to Maroke, you need a big scale. Yeah, and we need moving from analog to of digital course. as well. That's and you, you you have to operate uh, much bigger operations uh, than uh, the private stations are doing right now. Sure. Because it's this is the voice of the country. A bigger mandate. Yeah. You know, voice of how Indonesia. Are you going to overcome that? the issue of creativity, you know, when it comes to human resources. And that's, and that's, that's the, the second part. part. Exactly. After technology. So uh, can it, you just it's, pay them out or move them out to <laughs> different, fire them. It's, it's, oh, different uh, maybe dif different departments? Force them to retire. It's irrelevant right now, Yeni, to run uh, a broadcast with 7,000 people hmm. right now. Right now, it's, you know, running a television right now is, you know, is becoming more efficient, right? right? First, we have 20 people here at my channel. You have 20 people. <laughs> Look at what other uh, private TV stations. Yeah, 900, 1,000. Uh, 900, at, at least, you know, the maximum they have 1,000. Now we have 7,000 people working all over Indonesia, and some of them do not really know what to do. <laughs> so this is a kind of a waste. <laughs> this is kind of a waste. And this is what we have to cut. Waste. Yeah. This is what we have to cut. And the second point is that we have to merge mm. the televisions and radio like in other country. Yeah, NHK like, does that. And, uh, and, and I worked at NHK. BBC. Yeah, and BBC, uh, every BBC other one well. does right. it. But you know, there are limitations of a publicly funded company. And um, also company, online, you know. You know yeah, every, online. Every uh, major Digital, of online as well. But you know, you said one thing right, Don Tui. Quality is a target here, and, and nothing less than uh, perfection is accepted at a place like NHK. As I said, I worked there. It's it, Maybe it's tied in with a cultural mindset, or people's attitudes, and caring about their work. You got to care about what you do, or it's not going to yeah. get better. Well, in my assumption, because I used to work, I used to be in the television business for quite some time. As everyone knows, right. as a performer, Espe especially in a creative uh, department, you cannot hire permanent employees because then you cannot fire them. Oh, because they they get complacent. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, it's There's and, no competitions yeah. and. Okay, that is the first one. And the second, when you talk about creativity, it belongs to young people. Right. Uh, when hey, they get older, hey, you're creative. I'm creative. Come on. <laughs> well, because you hang out with young people. Oh, yeah. That's true. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Hang out no, but with I mean, people but you know what I'm saying. It's not the age. It's it just you, 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 your professionalism and your ability. Well, no, I don't really agree with that. If you look at what happens in uh, the private TV station in Jakarta, look at those who work in their creative department. Majority. Are young people, okay, well, and they're not permanent employees. Well, they've got they've got supervisors who are older. I know, but the creative Sorry department true. is always there. Okay, we could talk a, a lot about this, but you said by the end of this year, maybe the law passed, and we see some difference in a year or two after that. Exactly. Okay. Go go Tantowi. Yeah. All right. Hot end of work. And I want to offer my channel to you know the government. We talked about I talked to you about that. Let's talk about that. Mm. Hot end will continue shortly. It's a good over. Had to resist that. <laughs> <laughs> Price is good. <laughs> Why rising dole means rising dole. You're watching Hot Indonesia with Yeni, guest host Lao Da Silva, and me. Here's hot topic number two, breaking bread. You notice it in just about every mall, the delicious smell of fresh baked items such as bread, donuts, cakes, and others. It's not only a trend, but a huge business with industry growth projections at above 10% every year. The players are domestic and international brands, all hoping to win a piece 
of the financial pie. Now, you name the names, Bread Talk, Bread Life, yeah. um, uh, Jayco, Tous Le Jour, Ropan, and of course, Harvest. Mm -hmm. All gaining customers as, I guess, the rising middle class in this country mm. begins to enjoy the yeah. fruits of their labor. I right. love your chocolate cake. <laughs> is it? Ah, yeah. Is that it's your fine, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is, is it more than Thank just you. a trend? Do we, is, it, is it a trend? Actually, the bread is an inexpensive meal. You know, if you see uh, any Western country, it is, if you go to a restaurant, sit down and have a big meal, it's costly, and also costly, and plus the time as well. So you walk into any of the bread shops, you go there, have a cup of coffee with a piece of bread, it fills your stomach. And so I think when the society is, is um, um, advancing uh, to, 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 and plus the Western world, uh, it, it is, uh, you go to any city in London or in uh, Europe or US, uh, there are bread shops everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they call cafes, yeah. Right. So I think here in this country and, and also. It's practical as well. You can yeah. just carry it. You don't need a spoon. You don't De need any definitely. containers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's more like than that. just something to fill your stomach, though. It's kind of a place to be, and it's bright it's lights. A and it's, it's a smell. It's a smell of cinnamon. Yeah. You know, you walk into a, uh, a bread shop, and then you smell the cinnamon. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. But they all weren't like Ooh. that. Now they're having the, 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 the ovens right out front, so right you the front. get the yeah. smell. Yes. Yeah, it pervades yes. the whole mall. I mean, Lal, you have now what thirty harvest shops? Uh, Thirty-five. Oh, wow. Thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. growing. And, and, and yeah, it is growing. I mean, it seems cons consumers yeah. are attracted to um, uh, the marketing as well, and, and the cachet of being in a, a bread talk or a bread life or a harvest. It's kind of a fun place to be to meet your friends, not just buy a piece of bread and eat it, right? No, no, it's a, it's a lifestyle, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, mm. earlier we had only a few, few shops. Uh, even the harvest was open 2004. Right. Uh, but now you have uh, so many, so many different uh, Competition uh, cafes. Competition is fierce. Mm. Yeah. And they, you're still making money. Because uh, the people who are, I mean, uh, you know, earlier we, we were eat, having uh, food, our staple food with the rice, and uh, we had only a meal period. But nowadays, uh, you know, people go there, you see in the afternoon, even the pole, you go any time of the pole, day, oh, packed, yeah. packed. Yes. And it is not only food, it's just being there and... and Be seen. Yeah, exactly, yes. it become a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. You like you eat bread a lot, or I mean, we're we're not a bread eating country, but we're becoming. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right? It, this is the right Especially eating. small kids now, they almost you know practically. They, it is. It they, is. They're yeah. eating more bread than the parents. Then you know, my my kids eat more bread, uh -huh. more accustomed to eating bread than eating other food. I mean, it becomes mm -hmm. uh, like a basic food as yeah. well as rice. And, and there are different varieties now. Now, from a business standpoint, law, you know, baked mm -hmm. goods fairly cheap to make. When we're mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. wheat-based flour, it's yeah. not, not very expensive ingredients. So. And markups can be, I guess, pretty good. So there is a lot of money to be made in the business. Yeah, definitely. But because of the now the exchange rate has gone up to 13,000. Most of the it's not the flour and the sugar and the salt and filling, uh, chocolates, uh, sherries, uh, jams, Vila, everything else. Whatever, we are yeah. imported, right? I see. Right. So the cost has gone up uh, quite uh, drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it possible to source more of the uh, products from domestic? Uh, so it's so funny. E even the jams and all the fruits, they bring from Asia, uh, and then they bring it to uh, France and other European countries, and they process there. And re-export. And then re-export. Actually, so there is a business opportunity. There yeah, there definitely. For yeah, any, definitely. Any local producers who can produce up yeah. to the standards of the. But you know, part of it is also saying it came from France too, maybe. But those not days, yeah, right? those days it was, you know, we could say we use all imported items, and, but not anymore. They don't care. No. Some customers um, prefer to have more uh, locally sourced Yeah, yeah, products, definitely, you know, definitely. Like because of the you know, global warming issues and all that. So yeah. Want, I just wonder if it tastes good, you know, and you it's know, fresh. Less energy yeah. to source yeah. all this, uh, yeah, as long as it's fresh, yes. And also people are going away from these chemicals as well, so right, they right. like a real, real thing right. without. Those days, Indonesia, they, what they like is soft bread, but I think more and more people get to know there's a certain in order to make bread so soft, you can't just do it with the yeast and sugar and flour. You got to add certain chemicals to make really? it that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really? So, yeah, and then you have gas issues, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. That wow. that is true. Uh, and the gluten gluten free um, sort of uh, market is also growing. Yeah, it's right? big. It's big. We we is it big? Okay. Because of we breathe, you know, polluted air. We eat the wrong food, so we all are having a certain allergy issues, right? Yeah, right. Gluten is a, is a one of the major major uh, problem for for many people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Hey, real quickly, what was the secret to or the formula for your success in in, in getting harvest going to such a, a big? What, what happened was, uh, I have seen you at the Four Seasons before, right? And when I left 2004, and... Yeah, he was a, a pastry uh, chef at, the, at, the, at a hotel, four, a five-star hotel. Yeah, that's where I seen you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Used to come and sit down there when your dad was president at that time. Right. And having a, having a coffee, yeah. Uh, so what happened was, so I, when I left at that time, 2004, 2002 actually, um, first opened the Cheesecake Factory, and then I opened the Harvest. There was a market, there was nothing in between, either five-star hotels or bakery, local bakeries. So nothing in between. So I filled that vacuum. Right. Uh, and of course, why would you go to a hotel and pay, uh, you say at that time, 120,000 uh, yes. rupiah when you can buy for 30% cheaper, the same product. With the same quality. Yeah, same yeah. quality. And good packaging as well. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it wasn't always easy. I know we talked about it. It wasn't easy, yeah. you know, when I first started, it was 23 employees. Now we have two and a half thousand employees. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, if somebody tells you everything was rosy, I knew where I was going, it's all, uh, <laughs> it, it's not well, like that. Well, you are a role model for many entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. I, I personally follow his story, so that's why oh. I, I want to hear it. Hey, is there, are there any new industry trends coming up? I mean, when I see like squared donuts or like uh, meat filled, uh, I mean, what? You know, U.S. The, the, this called cronuts became a cronuts, you know cronuts. it's a huge uh, success, right? And what are, explain cross, what a cronut is. Croissant and donut. I, yeah, actually, it's it's a croissant dough. You cut it like a like a round so and lighter. You, it's lighter. Yeah, no, no, it's a croissant dough, mm -hmm. the dough of the croissant, and that means you you put the butter and then you roll uh, six times. Okay. With six times two, the twirl, and then you cut it like a uh, like a round donut. Take out the middle and you keep it outside until uh, it dresses, and then you fry. Mm. So Have it's, you had that? Do you still, do you, no, oh. it's too high calorie. <laughs> Very high calorie, because it has a butter inside. <laughs> it's so dark. I've always yeah. had this, you know, weight problem. Should have brought some products. So, well. Yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> you still bake yourself yeah, do, for I your do. customers? No, no, I don't. I don't bake anymore. You should do that as like a special event kind what, of thing, what, you know, for... What? But where people can buy with you know a special <laughs> price, it would be an honor. For My people. energy is going going now to develop new concepts. We have restaurants also. We have a Negev, we have a Bal Balboni, yeah, we have a Chateau, Chateau Blanc. We should go to um, Amber one night. And yeah. Amber, Amber, the new restaurant. You should come. Okay. Very beautiful Very restaurant. Nice. Yeah, because okay. we have to talk some things over. Right. Okay. okay. More hot endo is coming up. The newest girl to get the royal treatment. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta. Here's hot topic number three, royal treatment. Followers in England and around the world offered congratulations when the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Wills and Kate, gave birth to their second child. Charlotte is now the fourth in line for the British throne. Three days later, halfway around the world in Yogyakarta, another royal event. Sultan Hamengkubwono X named his oldest daughter Gusti the crown princess, meaning she will be next in line to rule that province. Of course, we all know Jogja has special status mm -hmm. because the Sultan is also the governor of the province. Mm -hmm. But questions have been raised, and I think you know, you, you, you know this better than me, um, about whether the law states that the leader must be male and whether she actually is next in line. You're not quite sure, right? The law, national law, you mean, the, the, the Jogja the, law. Yeah. The Jogja yeah. law. Yeah, there, there was, there's, this has been uh, controversy around that issue because it, uh, you know, some people say that is actually not men like that. I mean, uh, it's like a, it's a mis typo or anything like that, you know. So, um, but before they could, before they do something about it, mm. then it would remain a, um, a source of uh, contention. But the, 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 so the Sultan, Try to put an end to the questions mm. and said she is it. Yeah, mm. I mean, are you yeah. are you a royal, royal watcher? And do you follow all these? Well, <laughs> I, I studied in Jogja, right? For, mm. Oh, so uh, I also read that Sultan changed in the what kind of letter? The I'm not decree. sure. Yeah, from 
buono to bawono, yeah. which apparently the wording, the wording, yeah, yeah. wording. Buono is for male, and bawono can also male and female. Yes. So he changed so that one. More gender friendly terms. More gender yeah. friendly term. So maybe he wants to have term not just sultan but also sultana. Yeah. <laughs> but by appointing her as the the crown princess, I mm. mean it's it's directly. Uh, pointing the way. Yeah, no one's going to go against what he says. And, well, uh, the brothers do. The brothers. the brothers are making noises and all that. But the Sultan has the full rights to decide. Why, did they think they successor. wanted to be the next ruler if he... Well, because he doesn't have any sons. That's right, five daughters. So five, he had no daughters. choice. Yeah, yes. he had no choice. So they probably uh, think that there's a chance there, mm. you know, because traditionally there's always been like male successors. But Indonesia, I mean, uh, well, not Indonesia, Nusantara, you mm. know, that's the areas before Indonesia was what's called. We've always had traditions of uh, queens, female uh, leaders as well, princesses, mm. the queen Sima, um, Tribuana Tunggadewi, this mm. is the, the mother of Hayam Wuruk. Mm. We have a royal history you're saying in, in Indonesia, so we, we follow things around the world. But in England, it's mostly ceremonial. Here in Indonesia, mm. especially in Jogja, the royals have real duties. Yeah. Yeah, they rule the province, so mm. that's a little different than yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah. You know, Charlotte, getting back to uh, England, follows her brother George, her father, and her grandfather as the heir to the British throne. You know, Charles, the prince, is probably wondering when he's going to take over. The mother's going to live to 105. But is the is Gusti, Crown Princess Gusti, ready to take over from her father, do you think? Well, I think, um, you know, the parents have got these certain values uh, system that they have passed on to their kids. And I think there's a, a big challenge in Jogja now, which is the level of intolerance is increasing. So whoever I mean, is intolerance toward intolerance other religions, other religions, toward other minority groups, especially. So um, whoever is the successor would mm. be uh, has to be someone that can uh, hold it together. Mm. You know what I mean? So um, uh, you know, Gusti is a is a is a nice woman, mm. and I really hope that uh, you know she'll be able to pull it together. And uh, I would love to see a sultana, of course. You know, being mm. female myself. Uh, but it's to be able to soon, do yeah. the job mm. properly, she needs mm. all the support that she can get. Yeah, and then her, her father's relatively young, 69. He's not going to mm. abdicate anytime soon. Oh, Real quickly, really. last thing, I'll go around. Mm. Who is your favorite royal in the world? It can be living or dead. Who is your favorite? Handi, you have one? Who, who's your, who, who do you, who do you love? One of the most uh, famous this royalty in Indonesia is like Majapahit. Okay, so you're mm. a very historic guy. You, <laughs> like, you like history. Uh, I, I'll say mine, and you can keep thinking. Yeah. Uh, my favorite royal in the world in history was King Kamehameha, which is the, the yeah. first king of Hawaii, where I'm from and where Handi studied his MBA. Um, he united the islands, so he's kind of like the first one who bring the eight major islands together. So, and I was born um, in the same town as him, so okay. we have a royal background, little link there. Majapahit also, I've, I've got two. I've got United, two. right? Majapahit okay, also so United. Same kind of guy. Okay, yeah. you got two. Well, uh, Queen Elizabeth I is okay. that's a clear favorite. But also the, uh, the royal couple, King of Jordan and the Queen Rania. Because? I like them. No, because their stand is very clear against terrorism and against, uh, you know, all this radicalism that's happening in the world. And they've been very active. They've been very vocal about it. A good role models for royalty. Yes. Okay. It is feedback time now. Now, you've heard from us. We want to hear from you. Carolyn posted this on our Facebook page following our debate over the executions of eight drug prisoners. Quote, they should have gotten life in prison. Well, some say that's yeah. even a tougher punishment, Carolyn. If you have any feedback on what you've heard or would like to suggest something for us to talk about, please email us at hotindo at theindonesiachannel.com or comment through our Indonesia channel, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Final words time, Handi. We become what we think about most of the time. So if we think big, we become big. If we think positive, we become positive. If we mm -hmm. think negative, we become negative. Mm -hmm. So uh, think positive, be kind to others, do your best, and amazing thing will happen. Wow, mm -hmm. sound like golden moments with, what's that guy on the other channel? Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my former network. Final words, very nice. Final words, Yeni. Uh, you've probably heard of the statue that Golden, uh, that sorry, sorry, Dalton, sorry, not Golden, it's kind of Dalton, Golden, Dalton, yeah, Golden Dalton um, helped uh, build of my dad, my dad when he was young, and uh, people having fun taking pictures of themselves with uh, this, 
young Gusdur statue. So send us your pictures, and uh, the most interesting picture might get something. You know, we will send you something. With the hashtag, chat. certain with hashtags. hashtags yeah, with the yeah. hashtags, Gusdur and me in, in, in Instagram, and then mm. um, at Twitter, just send us, send it us to, uh, send it to us at the White Institute account. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And the statue the, of Young Gusdur is in uh, Amir Hamza Park in Amir, Menteng. Taman Amir mm. Hamza Park. Yeah, but so there they, are many uh, statues of Gusdur. Also, if you cannot go to Amir Hamza Park. Then there's one in Bogor, there's also one in Jogja, in Pakam area, uh, in uh, Roma Sindhu's place. Okay, so like a little selfie with the statue. Yes. Okay, and they win a prize. Okay, very yes. nice. Okay, my final words. The and most interesting one, not all of them. Okay, and got the it, got it. One. Yeah. one last comment on the executions. Australia's Prime Minister said one right thing the other day, that the establishment of scholarships in the name of the two executed Aussies was open to profound question. Yes, Tony Abbott, forgiveness is a virtue, but I agree that honoring two drug smugglers in our educational system is a little bit off, mm. right? That is not Indo, they didn't agree. That's not Indonesia for Yeni and Handi. I'm Dalton Tanaraka. I said about it. There's a, there's a See you again next time. <laughs>